What is good, everybody? Welcome to an epic My Damn Toys video. Today, I have your WWE SummerSlam 2019 full show review and results for you guys. You guys know how these videos work. I'm going to run through the entire car, breaking down everything that happened in the show matchup by matchup, giving you my personal thoughts and opinions on everything that happened at SummerSlam, from the attires to the matches to the event itself. You know, going into the show, guys, I wasn't the most hyped up. It felt like it was kind of dulled down for a SummerSlam card. You know, I was, I was just sort of worried. There wasn't very many matches that I was very excited for. However, you know, I go into it with an open mind every single time, and we're going to find out together if the show was indeed awesome, you know, what I thought about it, and everything in between. So that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into SummerSlam 2019. So starting things off with the pre-show, guys, we did have our first matchup of the night. It was the Cruiserweight Championship match between Drew Gulak taking on Oni Lorcan. And for this matchup, you know, it was pretty technical. I did, that kind of shocked me. I don't know why it shocked me completely. You know, these guys sort of had that background to them. However, uh, they were very technical in this matchup, pulling out all kinds of classic technical wrestling, mat wrestling in this one. And um, it wasn't my favorite matchup by any means. I, I love Drew Gulak. I call him Drew Lack. I love him to death. I think that Oni Lorcan's a good talent as well. I just wasn't very entertained. Maybe it was because I just woke up from a nap getting this show started, and I guess I needed something to kind of get me out of my chair and get me excited. However, uh, this didn't really do the job for me. However, it wasn't a bad matchup or anything. However, Drew Gulak does retain his Cruiserweight Championship, which I think is the right call. I don't think that anybody is on his level at the moment right now, and I don't think it would have been a smart move to take it off of him and put it on Oni Lorcan right now. So, Drew Gulak does retain on the opener of SummerSlam 2019. Our next matchup, guys, was pretty shocking. Buddy Murphy taking on Apollo Crews. This is the first matchup for Buddy Murphy on the main roster. Apollo Crews comes out to everyone's surprise. I don't think they announced this match, did they? It sort of just happened. They came out, and they put on a great match for what it was. You know, they didn't get that much time, but for what they had in the ring, they were going back and forth. Great athleticism for both men. Uh, going back and forth, beating the hell out of each other for a while there. And then out of nowhere, out comes Eric Rowan, or Rowan, if you will, and he beats the hell out of Buddy Murphy obviously continuing the storyline with Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan and uh, the mystery attacker. Uh, on SmackDown Live, Buddy Murphy was confronted by Roman Reigns, of course, and Roman Reigns was, you know, pushing his neck up into the corner, and uh, Buddy Murphy said that Rowan attacked Roman Reigns, so I guess this is sort of Rowan saying snitches get stitches, I guess, is what we're going for here, as Rowan be beats the hell out of Buddy Murphy, and I don't know if he's beating him up because Buddy Murphy lied on him, or if it's the, like I said, snitches get stitches. But Rowan definitely ruined a banger that would have occurred had, you know, this match actually went full circle. Next up, guys, we had an Elias concert in which it seems like it's been forever since we've seen Elias. Am I wrong about that? Like, I don't think we've seen an Elias concert or Elias with guitar in hand in the ring cutting, you know, his songs and singing his songs and ripping on the crowd and, you know, everything about the city. I don't think we've seen that in a little bit. So it's kind of refreshing to see this here. And that I think that's how it should have been when he started doing this shtick because I think he got really old when he was just coming out on Monday Night Raw every single week and ripping on the crowd and doing the same old thing and getting interrupted every single time. But it was refreshing here but a freaking a surprise comes out, guys. We had the Rated R Superstar, the first ever MDT champion, Edge, comes out to the ring. He doesn't say anything. He just gets in the ring and spears the hell out of Elias, and just, just he just takes him out, and that's it. He gets the pop for the entrance music, spears the hell out of Elias, and he's out of there, and I thought it was a cool segment. I thought it was a pretty good pop, you know, nothing but... Uh, you know, you know, nothing crazy or anything, but uh, if Edge could return to in-ring, man, it would be so beautiful. But that's it. He just comes out, spears Elias, and he's done. Totally marked out for this moment. Loved it. Next up, guys, we had a Women's Tag Team Championship match, and in my predictions video, it did cover how, you know, the Women's Tag Team titles, the Raw Tag Team titles, the SmackDown Live Tag Team titles, even the Intercontinental Championship wasn't quite ready yet. They hadn't booked any matches for SummerSlam for these championships. I thought it was very disappointing and weird how we didn't have any tag team matches up, but here they are on the pre-show. I don't remember them announcing this on anything, but they, they do come out here. They have a rematch with the Iconics, who were the former champions, and to be honest, with you guys. You guys know how I feel about the Iconics. You guys know how I feel about these two as a team in general, and I just was not in tune with this matchup at all. I just couldn't get behind it. I couldn't invest myself in it because I just don't like anything about these two teams. I just I just can't do it. I, I know the, the Iconics can be comical at times, but most of the time they're getting on my nerves, and they're kind of just got that screech and stuff, and I used to love, you know, Peyton Royce a lot when she was in NXT, but ever since getting up to the main roster, you know, everybody loves them. I, I'm just not a 
fan. I don't know what it is. But anyways, uh, Alexa Bliss was rocking some sick as hell Buzz Lightyear gear uh, in her attire. I thought that was awesome. And anyways, uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross do retain with the Twisted Bliss. And uh, that's all I have to say about this match. So we kick the main show off, guys, with the Raw Women's Championship match between Becky Lynch and Natalya in a submission match. And going into this matchup, I wasn't really looking forward to it. I feel like we've seen this matchup so many times, and it just didn't feel really special to me. However, both of these women really did deliver, and I, I knew they would. You know, they're both great in the ring. I, I really enjoy both of their work. Becky Lynch, especially, she's one of my favorites on the main roster for the women. And Natalya, I think that she's pretty up there for me as well. I just wasn't really looking forward to it. I don't know what the reasoning was. Again, I guess it just wasn't that fresh of a matchup for me. However, both women delivered. I love the story they were telling between the arm and, you know, trying to lock in each other's moves and trying to get out. And I thought there was a lot of passion in this. I thought the crowd was into it. Really good way to start off SummerSlam. And I think both women totally delivered. But Becky Lynch does win the matchup with a disarm her after a reversal out of the sharpshooter. Really good story told between both women. But Becky Lynch does ultimately retain her Raw Women's Championship. Next up, guys, we have my boy Dolph Ziggler taking on Goldberg in what I knew would be a squash match. And my God, guys, you know, they come out there. And one thing I want to add real quick, before the match, Dolph Ziggler was cutting a promo on Goldberg. And Goldberg's music interrupted Dolph Ziggler. And usually, like, you know, when somebody's music interrupts somebody cutting a promo, doesn't that mean that the person's literally about to walk out, like, you know, like saying, shut the hell up, I'm ready to fight? But when they did this in the, the Goldberg-Dolph Ziggler instance, they cut backstage and Goldberg hadn't even left his locker room yet. So it's like the WWE production truck was like, get this guy to shut the hell up and get Goldberg out here. So I don't know. That was just weird to me. I thought that was kind of dumb. But anyways, they come out there. We all knew how it would go. Ziggler, early in the matchup, two super kicks back to back. Uh, Goldberg immediately kicks out at one and both of them. Spear, jackhammer, one, two, three. And uh, that was it. We all knew that this would happen. You know, it, it was completely dumb. It was completely awful. It didn't make any sense. There was no point to it. And I understand, you know, Dolph Ziggler hasn't had the best career or, you know, he's not supposed to meant to be a boss or anything like that. But I don't know. I just didn't understand the point of it. I didn't understand the point of it in the predictions video. You know, I just don't, I don't get it. Like, there's no point to this matchup. It's 20 19. We don't really need to see Goldberg anymore. I know he's in impressive shape, but given what we got with The Undertaker and everything, I just think that, you know, it's just best that uh, we, we stop doing this. However, Dolph Ziggler gets on the mic and he, you know, he keeps talking shit to Goldberg and he keeps talking shit to Goldberg and he keeps on and keeps on. So Goldberg comes back here, uh, hits another spear. Uh, they repeat that process like three or four times and that was it. Completely just, just a waste of time. It really wasn't, it didn't add anything to the show. It was just, you know, to get Goldberg a pop and to uh, have people quickly forget about his terrible match with Undertaker, which I guess, you know what, uh, who cares? It's all good. But Goldberg does crush my boy Ziggler in a squash match that we knew would happen. Next up, guys, we have the United States Championship match between AJ Styles taking on Ricochet, which is the trilogy, I do believe. Is this the third or the fourth time? I believe it's the third time here. And you guys know how I feel about this. I love I love this matchup on paper. You know, I love it because, you know, it's two of the best in-ring workers that we have here. You got two great athletes stepping in the ring. However, I think that the storyline is just odd because you put the championship on Ricochet, and it looks like Ricochet is going to get this nice push. He's going to have this nice U.S. title reign, you know, uh, just giving him the opportunity he needs at the, on the main roster. And then here comes AJ Styles, beats him for the U.S. title, and then retains multiple times in a row. But this matchup delivered. I did enjoy it. The ending of the matchup was super awesome. You know, Ricochet's always incredibly athletic. Um, at one point in the matchup, he runs and does a... He jumps off of Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson's shoulders and then hits AJ with a Hurricane Rana. And then the end of the matchup came when uh, AJ Styles was, uh, you know, down in the ring. Ricochet climbed to the top turnbuckle. He would take out Carl Anderson. He would take out Luke Gallows. And he went for a uh, sort of a whisper in the wind, if you will, calling to Jeff Hardy here. And AJ Styles would catch him in the Styles Clash, hit the Styles Clash, one, two, three, epic finish. And Ricochet was rocking a sick AF attire in the Nightwing gear. I don't know how I felt about the shirt. I thought that he would just wear it to the ring and then take off the shirt and gloves. But he wore the, uh, the shirt and gloves the entire matchup, which was a very interesting look. But, you know, it was Nightwing, so it was badass. But overall, this matchup was enjoyable, but AJ Styles does retain the U.S. title, and I don't know where Ricochet goes from here. I'm very interested to see where he goes, but nonetheless, AJ Styles and the club remain with all of the gold here as he retains his United States Championship. 
Next up, guys, we have the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match between Bayley taking on Ember Moon, two of my favorite women's talents in WWE going head-to-head -head right here. I had been just advocating for Ember Moon over and over for her to have an opportunity here. I really did want to see this matchup take place on the main roster between the two, and I thought the matchup was solid. I thought they put on some good work in between, and um, I wish it was a little bit better, you know, but it, all in all, it was a solid matchup. I did enjoy it, and I think that they delivered for the most part. I think that, you know, both women had some good showing. They had some great reversals for each other. Um, I just felt like the crowd was dead or something. It's like the crowd wasn't into it or wasn't feeling it, and I'm not sure exactly why. I felt like nobody was into the... Or I felt like the crowd re really wasn't into the AJ Styles match either. I don't, I don't really know why. It's like they kind of... Uh, after the Goldberg stuff, it's like they kind of just kind of lost their mentality. I'm not sure exactly uh, what was going on there, but anyways, Bayley does retain the SmackDown Live Women's Championship, which I am glad for. I think that they're giving her a solid run here when with the championship, retaining the championship, looking strong as champion, and it's good stuff, man. I'm enjoying it, but she does overcome Ember Moon, and I'm wondering what's next for both of these ladies moving forward. Next up, guys, we had my boy Kevin Owens taking on Shane McMahon, and in this matchup, if Kevin Owens did lose, he would have to quit WWE. He comes out, you know, a uh, crowd is red hot, you know, he, they're in Canada, his hometown, or his home country, whatever you want to call it here, and uh, the crowd is super over for it. I freaking love Kevin Owens, guys. Just freaking fantastic talent. The man just proves it every single night. Anyways... Shane McMahon gets on the, gets on the uh, microphone and he says he has a special guest enforcer because of course he does. So out comes Elias. Elias joins the matchup and uh, I really didn't understand. I didn't know because, you know, we still had a regular referee but he said that, you know, Elias is the special guest enforcer or referee. I don't know what the hell was going on. But he had a referee shirt on but he wasn't uh, like le legitimately the referee. So I don't know. But also if he got involved in the matchup it would have been disqualification. It was just weird. But anyways, it didn't matter because the, the matchup was awesome. I really enjoyed it. I think this was my favorite matchup to this point of the night. Um, just, I, I really love the crowd's interaction. They were super into it. I love the shenanigans with Elias interacting with Kevin and, you know, from behind and costing him the, or trying to cost him the match and, you know, all this good stuff. And we had ref bumps. Uh, Kevin Owens with the senton. Kevin Owens with the frog splash. Uh, uh, the chair was involved. Just really good stuff, man. Really enjoyed it. Kevin Owens um, was about to hit Shane McMahon. The referee was down. He was about to hit Shane McMahon man with the, with the uh, steel chair, but the referee got up and Kevin was like, nah, I'm not going to hit him with a chair. So the referee took the chair from Kevin. He hands it over to the official. And while the ref's back is turned, Kevin Owens just destroys Shane right in the nutsack with a kick. And then he hits the stunner. One, two, three. Kevin Owens wins and he remains in WWE, man. Great job. I really love this matchup. Again, probably my favorite matchup to, this far uh, on the night. Just good stuff. Good story. Really enjoyed it. And um, I think that uh, Kevin Owens is uh, going to get the push he deserves. Next up was the fantasy matchup, guys, between Trish Stratus and Charlotte Flair. A battle of generations, if you will, here in this matchup leading into SummerSlam. To be honest with you guys, I wasn't really looking forward to this matchup, per se. I really wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't invested in the matchup. However, coming in, I knew that both women would deliver. I just felt it. You know, Charlotte always pretty much delivers. She's always great in the ring. Trish Stratus, you know, I knew that she could bring it as well. She has always been great. Grew up watching her. Always been a fan of her. And that is exactly what they did. I thought they put on a fantastic little match here. Crowd was really into it. Obviously, Trish being from Canada, I thought that that was excellent. I loved it. Just like Kevin Owens, the crowd was really invested in it. That's what made the matchup even better. But overall, I just thought both women brought it, man. It was hard hitting. It was fun. It was fun. It was good pacing. It was just really good stuff. Both, both women just beating the hell out of each other back and forth. Trish took a ton of punishment in this thing. But ultimately, she did come up short and Charlotte does win with the figure eight, which she should have. I thought that was the right call. No reason for Trish Stratus to come back out of retirement here and beat Charlotte. For the, That wouldn't really make any sense here. So I thought this was the right call. It made sense and it was a fun matchup that Charlotte ultimately wins and it was nice, man. Good, good, Just good stuff here. Next up, guys, was the match that I was most looking forward to, the WWE Championship match between Kofi Kingston taking on my boy Randy Orton, my second favorite wrestler of all time, getting an opportunity to capture his 14th world title here at SummerSlam. And my God, guys, I was enjoying the hell out of this match. But what in the hell was the finish? What was that? I totally was... Just, I did not understand this at all. So, Randy Orton gets, he hits Kofi with a beautiful RKO off of a, uh, Kofi goes to the top turnbuckle, goes for a dive onto Orton, 
hits him with a beautiful RKO out of midair. Co uh, Kofi would roll out of the ring, and Randy would give chase. And so he's out in the uh, he's on the outside of the ring, and Kofi's family sitting front row, and Randy's sort of like looking at his family and sort of kind of like torturing his family with like you know standing over Kofi, sort of giving symbols. And I guess the referee counted to ten or or whatever, but it didn't like I didn't see the ref counting that loudly on television. It didn't really come across to me that he was counting. He may have been counting loud and like everybody chanting it, but it didn't seem that way. It did not seem like it was a count out. It just seemed like, oh, Kofi snapped. And immediately when Kofi attacks Randy, they call for the bell. I was completely confused. I didn't know what the hell was going on. The matchup was really starting to heat up. It was really starting to get into, you know, the climax territory. And they cut it off here. And God, I mean, I guess it leaves us wanting more. But geez, man, the, the crowd was pissed off. I was pissed off. I was really looking forward to the end of this matchup, whatever it was going to be. And we didn't get it, man. I guess we're going to, I don't know what the next pay-per-view is. Is it Hell in a Cell or is it Clash of Champions? I don't know but uh, I am looking forward to their next matchup because I, I think it's going to be a uh, stipulation. You know, Kofi Kingston beat the hell out of Orton with the kendo stick following the matchup after he snapped on him. So hopefully we get a stipulation match. And I like this. It's kind of like Randy playing mind games, getting in the head of Kofi. Kofi's going to crack and it's going to cause Randy Orton to take that WWE Championship away from Kofi. That is what needs to happen. So that is what I'm uh, hoping happens here. So Randy Orton does win, but it is by disqualification or count out, maybe a double count out. I don't know, but nonetheless, Kofi wins the championship. He retains his championship because it was either a double count out or a disqualification leading to Randy winning. So whichever one they went with, which I believe it was a double count out, again, I, I'm not sure. I, I couldn't really tell what happened, but nonetheless, Kofi is still your WWE champion for now. Next up, guys, we have my boy Finn Balor taking on The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. The Fiend's in-ring debut since this new Bray Wyatt gimmick all started with the Firefly Funhouse and the epicness. Bray Wyatt comes out there, guys, and oh my God in heaven. First of all, Finn Balor rocking the white attire. Freaking beautiful, guys. You guys know it's my favorite color. I already had this custom pre-made because he's actually worn the attire at a live event. But uh, yeah, just, just beautiful stuff seeing it here at the pay-per-view of SummerSlam. Now, Bray Wyatt comes out, guys, and his freaking entrance music is epic. It's like a new twist on his old entrance music. It sounds so evil and so menacing. It's really heavy. It, he looks freaking badass. And my god, guys, that freaking lamp, that lamp with the severed, decapitated Bray Wyatt head over the lantern and it's like eyes are shut and it looks like it's like an old Bray Wyatt head. That is like the sickest thing I think I've ever seen in my entire life. That is exactly why this pay-per-view was rated TV 14 for, for distress disturbing images. It had to be. It had to be. That had to be why it was TV 14, guys. My lord was that thing epic. Like, I, that was beautiful. They, they, they've they outdone themselves with this Fiend character. He looked badass in the ring. Bray Wyatt looks wonderful. His size, his his speed, his athleticism, he he put on mass. He looks great. And I hate that my boy Finn Balor here had to, you know, pay the price and be the first victim of the Fiend. But my God, was the Fiend epic. I mean, Jesus Christ. Anyways, Bray Wyatt does win as expected. We all knew it would happen. I don't know what's next for Finn Balor. Um, one thing that was interesting, though, guys, he is going to use his ma the mandible claw as his finisher, which I do like. I like that touch. But um, what about that broken neck move that he did? It's like he like snapped uh, Finn Balor's neck. That was very weird. I didn't, I didn't get that. It's like he tried to legit kill him, so I don't know what that was about. But you know what? Uh, I, guess, I guess I'm for it. I don't know. But my God, what a debut for The Fiend, man. I can't even, like, express it right now. That freaking, that was ridiculous. Nonetheless, The Fiend wins, and I am excited to see where this character goes now. I, I am ready for more matches. I don't know if this is going to be, like, an alternate ego, like the demon is for Finn Balor. My guess would be that that is the case, and we will see a different Bray Wyatt. We'll see the regular Bray Wyatt and the red sweater on, on different occasions is what I'm guessing will happen. But my lord, what an epic debut for The Fiend. Man, I, I am behind this all the way. And for the main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Universal Championship match between Brock Lesnar taking on my man Seth Rollins right here. Seth Rollins, another one of my favorite talents in the world here, taking on Brock here, trying to become a two-time Universal Champion. And uh, coming into this matchup, guys, I really don't know what you know what the, what they were doing for the storyline because you know multiple weeks in a row, Seth Rollins was beat the hell out of by Brock Lesnar, injuring the ribs. He came into this match really hurt, and they put on a good 
match. I actually enjoyed this match a lot. The beginning of the match, Brock Lesnar was going for a German, and he flipped Seth Rollins out of it, and Seth Rollins uh, hits, uh, hits Brock Lesnar with a curb stomp, and then later on, just a few moments later, does the same thing, but with a super kick added to it. Really fun matchup, actually. Um, one of their better match. I think this was a better one-on-one -on -one match than their match at Mania. It was longer. It was more competitive. The only thing I didn't like is I don't think that Seth really sold the ribs as much as I'd like. Uh, I think if you take that much punishment with your ribs uh, after multiple weeks in a row and then here tonight at SummerSlam just taking that and then two frog splashes and then multiple kicks to the back and hits to the back and you know bear hugs and things of that nature I'm pretty sure you would be dead so I don't I don't really know about that but besides that really fun matchup and Seth Rollins slays the beast again ladies and gentlemen takes down the beast and Seth Rollins is your two-time Universal Champion. So I'm guessing that Brock Lesnar has to be gone now, right? Like, this has to be him gone. Like, we've, we've, we've seen this before. We have seen this before. We've seen this before. We thought we were done with Brock. He wins money in the bank, cashes in on Rollins, recaptures the Universal Championship, and here we are again. So now are they going to let Rollins get, is he, are they going to give Rollins the Universal Championship reign that we deserve, that he deserves? You know, no Becky Lynch girlfriend storylines, no Trash Corbin, no Brock Lesnar. Let this man have a good reign like Kofi Kingston, retaining the championship, having quality matchups with many, many contenders leading up to The Fiend is what I would guess is where we're going with this. I think that maybe by the Rumble, The Fiend will be WWE Universal Champion. That's what I would guess. That's where I think they're going to move going forward. Or Seth Rollins may be fighting The Fiend immediately. Who knows what they're trying, but The Fiend is definitely a top character. He's, he's going to be a, one of the top players, which he should be, and uh, I think it's going to be really fun stuff moving forward. Overall, the show, the show was was decent. I mean, it wasn't my favorite, but I did have some fun with this show. I, I enjoyed the ending here. I thought something big was going to happen. I don't know what I was thinking, really as far as that concern, but Seth Rollins does win. Another thing that you guys are probably going to wonder is, you know, what about Seth Rollins' attire? Well, this is pretty much Seth Rollins' attire from uh, from SummerSlam 2019. I mean, I don't really know. I may try something. I'm not sure. I wasn't really uh, invested in the attire. It really didn't, you know, capture my eye. It was really just black with some SRs on it with, like, some shiny stuff. Nothing too crazy or over the top, but we'll see. We'll see if I want to make it or what. Uh, I'll play around with some ideas and see if I want to make it. You know, I never even made the Avengers or the X-Men attire, so I'm not sure if I'm going to make this one, but, but that pretty much does it for your SummerSlam 2019 full show review and res results, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. I would love to know your thoughts on the show down below. Do you want me to make the Seth Rollins custom uh, from SummerSlam 2019? Please let me know down in the comment section below. I would appreciate it, guys, but thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.